what's going on? Today we will be doing the second part of Splunk. The room is, uh, the room name is Splunk and you know we, in the last video we did advanced persistent threats or task 5. In this video we will do task 6 and we will answer these questions of course. As you know, uh, the objective is not to just get the answers. We are more interested in walking uh, through the uh, procedure and how to use Splunk to investigate events and construct chain of events or construct timeline of how the attack has happened. So basically, in the last video, we did that for APTs. Now in this video, we're going to take a ransomware as an example, specifically server ransomware. So if you open the virtual machine after you deploy the uh, machine, you will be able to see the scenario here. Of course, get back to the last video if you want to know how to start with the machine. Now, basically, uh, given we are given a machine that is infected, okay, with ransomware, and this is a screenshot taken from the machine, showing or displaying how what is the message that has been displayed on the desktop uh, when the machine was infected. As you can see, it is a message uh, directing the user to pay a ransom in order to get their files back. So, our aim here is not to recover the files. Our aim here is to investigate the event or the incident with a Splunk to build or construct a timeline of events in order to know how the attack has happened, what are the uh, files, and what are the, uh, the malicious files that infected the machine, how the user uh, was infected, and uh, what are some of the uh, artifacts attributed to the attackers. So, you can start with the walkthrough here. So basically, let's go the, over the first question. The first question is finding the IP address of, uh, most technically, most uh, probably this is the uh, host name of the infected machine on 24 August. So. If we open up a search instance here, now we will define what we will do here. We define a timeline or we define the date of the search. So it is 24 August 2016, which is uh, the date where the infection has happened. And in this query here, we define the source that we are looking uh, through and we define also the host name. This is the host name of the infected machine. Now, how do we find out the IP address of the infected machine? So basically, we put the basic search query here. And then we use the interesting fields to find out how we can move further. So we're interested in, as you can see here, the host name. And back to the question, we're given the date and we're given the host name. We're required to find the IP address. What was the most likely IP address of? Okay, so let's drill down on the fields and find out if something can be found about IP addresses. So we have here source IP. As you can see, we got 94% on this IP address counts. Source host, here we got the host name and we have source as well. The source is a mix of the IP address and the host name. So if we correlate the results, as you can see, the first one, we have 94% on this IP address. And if we click on source host, as you can see, the same 99% is attributed to the host name in in the question. And if we click also on the source, we see the same host name with 94% count, which leads us to the safe conclusion that the IP address of the source host or the host name is this one. Now, basically, you take the note that this IP address is the IP address of the machine that has been infected. So we can take a note of this IP address because you will need this IP address in order to find uh, answers for the next questions. So what is the name of the USB key inserted by Bob Smith? Let's go back. So if we click on next here, so identifying the removable media. And you can also see how uh, they arrived to the final query that answered the question. But let's let me walk you through the query, how 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 it 
how it has been constructed from the first place. So basically, we start with a query where the source type is Windows registry and we have friendly name. So basically, first, well, then why we why we search in the Win registry or why do we set the source type here as Win registry? Since Win registry contains information about the flash disk or the USB uh, USBs that have been plugged into the targeted computer. So that's why we search in Windows registry. And since the question is asking, what is the name of the USB key? We search through Windows registry. Friendly name. So friendly name here, this is a screenshot. Uh, okay, so this is a screenshot from Windows registry. As you can see, when a USB is plugged into your PC, there is a, as you can see, key here called friendly name. So Whenever, in all, actually it is constant field, you will see it every time you plug in a USB hard drive. So friendly name in this case is super mutt. In our case, in order to find the name, we plug in friendly name as a keyword. And we search. Of course, as you can see, we got two events, which is good. It means that we can narrow down the results easily. So if you look at the interesting fields, we got um, registry key name, right? And we got registry type, we got registry path, events. It means that the only thing, the only thing we need to do here is to just reformulate the results. So I'm gonna use the pipe and here type table. So we can sort the results in a table for uh, easy visibility. And we type host, to display the host, in this case it's here, and we type also object. The object is from the interesting fields. If you click on the object here, you see the friendly name we are talking about. And we type data to display the data. So data here is also in the interesting fields. If you click on the data, you will see the name of the USB, right? Uh, but it's recommended you use a table in order to reformulate the results so you can easily extract the answer. Click on search. You see now the result set has been formatted in a very friendly manner, in a friendly way. We have the host, which is the infected machine. We have the object, which is friendly name in our keyword. And we have the data that's contained in the friendly name or the value of the registry key friendly name, which is Miranda PRI. And that's the answer. Okay. Third one, after the USB insertion, a file execution occurs. That is the initial server infection. This file execution creates two additional processes. What is the name of the file? So a USB has been plugged uh, and a file has been executed. What is the name of that file? Okay, But actually the owners of the uh, challenge, they give you a hint. This file execution creates two additional processes which means that you may need to search through the executed processes, right, to find the answer. Let's get back here. So if you leave everything as is, but we're gonna reconstruct the query and define Windows system monitor as a source type. Since we are looking to find information about the processes, so we're gonna click on source type, define sysmoon, and then we're going to define the host. In this case, the host is the infected machine. Click on that. As you can see, the query is being populated every time we click on a field here. And then we come, the man, we come to the manual work. So since we are looking for files not in the uh, infected uh, system uh, drives, right? We look in the USB. So we define uh, double quotes and type here D and we type double backslashes so basically why do we why do we type D because D is the most most probably D is the drive letter for the USB two backslashes because we want to avoid, because one backslash is an escape character two backslashes make sure that the query is executed correctly so here as you can see, we look in the system monitor logs for the host and everything with the uh, driver to D. 
and then we sort the result by the oldest. So we want to see what was the first file that had been executed. Search. So we got eight events. If we pipe this to table, and we take a look at, for example, let's take a look at uh, parent process. And we also like to see uh, process We also got per process current directory. Also host. Or let's put the host here. Let's see if we can put a field for there's something about drive letter. This is a computer. Click on that. Nope. Current directory. Yeah, we can also add current directory here. Host current So this is the host, the parent process, the process itself, and we got the process current directory and the current directory. Let's go back to the question. After the USB insertion, a file execution occurs. What is the file name that has been executed? So basically, I'm going to remove this one. Um, and then, yeah, actually, we, we should have kept this. Keep it, reverse. So reverse. So as you can see here, the first event was the parent process was explorer.exe launched as you can see here microsoft word has been launched from or invoked by a file for in the uh, flash disk or the usb right the current directory was d and the current directory was d if we go down after the uh the word file has been launched as you can see it becomes the parent process and then we got another child process here under it and this child process becomes the parent process and another child process under that which is visual basic script and then we got chain of child and parent process but the first one was a word file with the extension .tm right that originated from the flash disk drive so that safely we can safely conclude that this is the file name that has been executed when the USB has been inserted. There is another way to find the answer actually. If we use the parent command line and command line in the, our in our query. So if we're back, search. So we have here something to do with command line. Let me see. Yeah, we don't have, but we can build a query ourselves. Yeah, we have command line. So the command line shows the uh, the command right that that has been executed by the process itself. So we see here all of the command line. So we can use that to find out. The file name. So basically, what we can do here, we can remove D and type command line equal okay wildcard for the drive letter, which is the double backslashes. okay and or we can either use the command line or parent command line one of them let's see if we have parent command line here yeah we have one i guess parent command line so parent command 
line equal to same. So here we look for the in the host here, we look for a reference to the, to the drive letter D where the command line starts with something in it that is reference to drive letter D. Right, so we can find out what was the command has, that has been launched and by which file or which process. And then we finish this table to format the output time to show the, all this event. And we also add the command line. Sort by oldest results or by the oldest. Let's check out the results. So this query returned actually more neat output, as you can see here. So we have two results. The first one sorted by time, as you can see. So the oldest one originated by Windows Explorer. And the command line was, as you can see, Word file triggered by, uh, actually, Microsoft Word triggered by the Word file. So that, that was the first file executed from the flash disk or the USB. During the initial server infection, a Visual Basic script is run. The entire script from this execution, repented by the name of the launching exe, can be found in a field in Splunk. What is the length in characters of this field? So here it's saying that we got a Visual Basic script that has been launched and this Visual Basic script has been launched by a file or executable file. We need to find out the field that indicates these values, and we also need to find the length of this field. So we're given here the exe that we need to look for uh, executable files, and we need to see what are the uh, subsequent actions taken by the executable files. So we're back to the same command here, but we will, what we will do here, we will modify the command, keep the sysmonitor as is. Um, let's see here, and search for .exe, everything that starts with or ends with .exe. Okay, so we got 42,000 more, and it is loading. So we got to uh, shrink the results a bit. So I'm gonna add more to the query here. What we will do actually, uh, I'm thinking of, we add command line, so we need here to put or display all of the fields that has command line in it, all of the fields. And we define the host, which is uh, no problem. Okay. Let's see where is the command line. Okay, we have to wait for the, the results to fully display. So we got 101,658 events. If we take a look at the interesting fields, what we can use to further narrow down the results query, uh, there is no command line, but we can put it ourselves actually. So let me remove the host or let keep it. Command line equal to star. So I want all of the fields to be displayed that contain the command line. And here I'm gonna put event code. Let's see if we have event code here. We have event code, okay. So what are the values? 73215. Since this is a process creation, we're looking for one. So put here events. Or click on that actually, you don't need to type it manually. One. So event code one now, 
And here, as you can see, the field command line has appeared. Let me click on that. See what do we got. Okay, I'm going to add it myself. Command line equal star. So the query became like this. So we're searching in the system monitor logs where the host is the infected machine uh, for executable files and also where the uh, for events that reference um, process creation and split all of the fields that contain command line in it. Now that's the result. Now it comes to the format. So we use the eval command since we're interested in finding uh, the length of the field or the length of the characters contained in the field. So we, we will use the eval that contains uh, mathematical functions, length equal, yeah, it's here, command line. Let's see here. Oh, we need a table. So table display command line and we display also the length and let's sort by length Okay, still not finished yet, finished, all right. So, we don't have anything here, right? Length equal length, table command line length, sort length. So I have no idea why there is no, there are no numbers here. Okay, so the first one was task scheduler. I'm not sure that we are looking at the right place because here we don't have, um, yeah, there are no numbers, nothing. So index, source type, Windows event logs, operational, looking for executable files. Okay, what about if we search um, so here, command line equal star, event code one. All right, let me click on that, see what we can find here. Command line. Okay. Event code one. Parent process. Eval. Let's calculate the uh, length first and display, say display table length. So we got the numbers now. Okay. Length and here put command line. Okay, we finally got the numbers. Now we need to sort them actually. So sort. Length. All right, so actually we started to get some results. Now, as you can see here, back to the question. During the initial server infection, a VP script is run. The entire script from this execution, prepended by the name of the launching ESE, can be found in the field in Splunk. So here we have to look at the command line and see if there is reference to Visual Basic script. So CMD. 
Exe. And as you can see, this is the seems to be the script actually, VBS, and the field length is 4490. Next, Bob Smith workstation was connected to a file server during the ransomware outbreak. What is the IP address of the file server? So technically, the infected machine here was connected to a file server, and the file server might have been also infected to the ransomware. That's why they're asking you, or they started, they actually ask you to find the IP address because you will use that uh, to find out the what has happened on that host. Back, so what is the IP address of the file server? So, let's remove all of this. And we are back to the sysmon events. In sysmon events, why we keep sysmon events? Because in sysmonitor we can see the processes executed. We can also see the network activity, which is the point of interest in this question. That's why we keep the sysmon as a source type. Now, hit search one more time, and we will reconstruct the query from, or starting from this point. I'm gonna add the host. So the host is, yeah, this is the host. And then, uh, during the other outbreak, what is the IP address? Okay, let's see what we got here. So if we search with this, we're back to the first query. If we take a look at destinations, IPs, many destinations. Okay, here. So we get, we get this host name, right? As you can see, is among the destinations that, has, that have received traffic from the infected host. If we scroll down, to source host, we see one source host, which is the host name of the infected machine. Now, normally in Windows event logs or when, or when uh, in, uh, in uh, sysmonitor logs, it's better to use um, host names instead of IP addresses. But we try both in order to find out or in order to be consistent with the search. So since we're looking at, we don't know if we're gonna find the IP address of the file server, we want to search for, uh, want to look at the network connections logs where the source was the infected machine. So we look at the sources here and it is better to search with the host, as I said, click on the source. Okay, now we see all of the logs, all of the events that reference all of the network connections originated from the infected host here using it as a source. So we can find out what are the destinations. If you click on the destinations here, IPs, click on destination to display the host, we can see the host name here, but we're not sure yet that this is the host name of the file server. That's why we would use mathematical uh, capabilities in um, Splunk. So pipe to stats count by destination IP. Stars, not stars, it's stats. So what we're doing here, we're trying to count the number of network connections, okay, using count. Initiated by the infected machine and grouped by the destination IP to see which is the uh, the IP address that received the most hits from the infected machine. We can take, we can make a conclusion actually or inference about uh, the validity of the result based on that. And we sort descending. Okay. Unbalanced codes. Where is this? Oh, here, okay. Okay, so we have 
or we got two IP addresses with high number of counts. So most likely we're looking here at two possible results for the file server. We got the first one, we got the second entry. But we, we, we need to make sure, so one way to make sure, or one way to make your results uh, accurate, we have to look more than, or use more than one way to find the answers. So we take a note at these IP addresses, all right? And then we construct a new query to find answers, right? Um, using different ways, actually. So basically here, I'm gonna remove the query here and use different source type. Okay, back to events here, no events, okay. So here, remove this one and type Windows registry, win. Search. Add the host name. So we will look in the Win registry for the keyword file share. Because when you connect to a file share, this is locked in the Windows registry. So you click on search. Okay, how many events we have? 818. Okay. Let's see the interesting fields here. What do we got? Destination one. Okay. Let's look at the source. There is no source. Yeah, this is the registry actually. Okay. Seems like, as you can see here in the events, we have uh, one entry for this IP address, and we have on the right we have file share. So we have repeated events here, as you can see, mentioning or referencing file share or an attempt to access a file share on this IP address. And previously, we have seen that this IP address has high number of accounts uh, as far as the number of connections that are received from the infected host is, are concerned. So we can conclude that this is the IP address of the file server. But still, still we can also use Explorer as a keyword. Why Explorer? Because when you uh, browse a file share, you are using the Windows Explorer. And let's use stats count by, let's see by what. Look at the fields here. Process image, registry key name. Okay, so registry key name. So basically, type registry key name, sort, count. No result. I think this is wrong. Let me correct this. So, so we have 818 count for the attempt here. Attempt to access a file share. If we use here, uh, instead of Explorer, use file share, you may get the same result. Yeah, the same. So, 1818. But using Explorer, you see also uh, other entries, right? Give you the ability to compare results and correlate events. So as you can see, this one is the right answer. So the IP is 192.68.250.20. Next one. What was the sus first suspicious domain visited by? Okay, so here the, the question is, what are the domain names that have been visited by the uh, uh, um, the infected host? So it is asking you specifically the first suspicious domain. Uh, so let's go back. And here we, will, we need to change the query a bit. 
So remove all of that and we will change the source. So the source will be now, instead of window registry, we're looking at domain names. So we need to find that by looking at the stream DNS source site. So stream DNS. And then search. From that point on, we can rebuild the query. So the source here in this case is the host or the infected host. Look at the source here. So if we can find something about the source, so source. Okay, add this to your query. And also add, since we want to find the domain name, we want to find the record type. So record type in this case is a record. Okay, still need some refinement. Okay, let's see here. What was the first domain? Let's um, do some uh, table here. Uh, let's add destination, destination IP port query. The query. So add query. Also add the um, source. Add query. So here we see all of the queries made by the source. The source in this case is the IP address of the infected machine. But still, we cannot we cannot go through all of these queries, right? There are some logit and uh, logit domains actually that cannot be queried by a typical malware or ransomware although it's possible but it is rare so we need to um, get rid of this of these whitelists so we will use uh, conditions or conditional statements to hone and refine our query so we're going to remove this one and type here use not so not will do some execution Query equal, or yeah, query equal, say everything that ends with Microsoft. And since Splunk has implicit and, you don't need to type and, so just type or query. So we got Microsoft here, we got also. Um, Bad, there will be bad or this one as well or let's filter through these and then see what will happen. So close this one and type table source query error in search command I'm able to parse the search comparator equal the search job has failed due to an error you may Comparator equal is missing a term on the right on the right hand side. Oh, okay, this one. Let's see now. So we still got Microsoft here. Try now. There is still some instances of Microsoft. We have ping, so I have so much to whitelist. So type or. And in this case, query will be, or will exclude also ping. Ping.com. Oops, we have dot. Or 
for query. Let's see here. IP info. Okay, let's see now. So there's no ping, but still we got Microsoft. Avocat.com actually. Yeah, so we got rid of Microsoft now. And also here.com. Dots. Also add dot here. Okay, let's remove the dots. Okay, so right now we have reasonable number of results we can uh, look through. So table, source, query. So we display the source, we display the query, but still we need to use time because we want the first connection attempt, time, source, query, and also for the destination and reverse, display the oldest event. So the oldest event was in 2016, 24 8. It was from the infected host to wine corp local. Uh, this is actually a whitelist. The second one is also a whitelist. The third one is solidarity something whatsoever. And this is the answer for your question. So that was the first domain name that has been uh, visited or queried uh, by the infected host after the infection happened. Next question, the malware downloads a file that contains a server ransomware, crypto code. What is the name of that file? So after the infection happened, the infected machine has downloaded the file, which in turn downloaded the ransomware. So you have to find out the file name. Okay, so now we're looking at downloads. So which means we have to use hey, HTTP as a source in the logs. Search. Let's define the source as the infected machine. Source. Um, yeah, this one. Okay. Let's use now some Output refinement tools, stats, count, values. I want to see the URLs actually. How many times every URL is or was visited? So use the URL and sort by destination. So we see it how many times every URL is visited. Okay, and we also see the destination, but we need to sort this uh, more. So what we will do here, uh, actually it is sorted, um, but let's click on this, Microsoft Shell. So we have here a URL, as you can see, and this is the image file. And this is the URL that we know it, wa it was queried when the machine got infected. And there's a file name or an image that seems to be uh, or seem to have been downloaded. So actually, this would possibly be the answer. But of course, we need to make sure that this is uh, definitely the answer. So we we'll use another source type, uh, which is in this case will be Suricata, the IDS logs. So remove this one, add here, we just want to make sure that actually this was the correct file that has been downloaded. 
source is the IP address of the infected machine. URLs. Okay, let's type it ourselves. We want to put all of the fields that reference URLs. So we type URL equals star and we sort by stats, count, the same as value, URL by destination. So what Suricata has to do, has to say, so we see some correlation between the results. As you can see, the same file name has popped up here. We scroll down, also the same file name has appeared in the IDS logs. And this was a domain name that has been uh, queried when the first infection happened. So safely now we can conclude that this is the file name that has been downloaded, which in turn downloaded the server ransomware. Next, what is the parent process ID of temp? So the question seems to be uh, originating from a different perspective. What temp has to do with everything that we have done so far? So let's get back and see here. So since we're taking a look at the processes, we're gonna get back to our old friend, Microsoft event, Microsoft uh, SysMounter logs. Source type. And simply, we will take the file name and use it as a keyword in our search. Okay. So we've seen all of the events where the temp file has been mentioned. But we still have to answer the question, what is the parent process uh, PID? So we have to use some old friends help, which is the command line. Okay. And then use the table to formulate the results. So we're interested in finding the process ID parents process ID so process ID here parent process ID and parent command line um, okay I think we have just to make sure that our uh, Command is correct first, then we formulate the results. Let's see here. So we got seven events where the temp has appeared with command line in the fields. Let's see the, 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 the uh, interesting fields. So we can now start to sort the results. So table. So we want to display the process uh, ID. Let's see if there is process ID here. Okay. Press ID. Yeah. So process ID. Let's also display the parent process ID. We're also interested in that. So parent process id and the command line command line command line parent command line okay sort reverse display the oldest first now here we can we can look at the events where the temp file has been referenced, where the command line is in the fields, and we display the process ID, the parent process ID, and the parent command line. Sorting by the oldest. So the oldest, the oldest event, right? The oldest event is one that contains a Visual Basic script, or the command line is executing a Visual Basic script by this file. 
back to the question of temp file let's look at the temp so here's um, a process or command that involved the temp file executed by or invoked by the cmd the process pid is 2948 and the parent one is 1476 so the answer is kind of different right let's see the oldest what is the parent process of ah okay so here is another one So actually, what invoked the, the question is the parent process of temp. So this is the PID process of temp, right? And the parent is 3968, because the first infection is the VPS. That's how the answer came. All right. Amongst the Suricata signatures that detected the server malware, which signature ID alerted the fewest number of times? So here we're back to the Suricata logs. So again, we define Suricata and search. Okay. So here we're looking at signatures. So you have to find out signatures and signature ID in the interesting fields. No. Okay, click on 247 more field and search for alerts. Okay, signature. Nope. So I don't have. If you don't have them, uh, let's look one more time. S seems to be silly, but let me try it one more time. Anything about signature? Nope. Alert. Detect alert. Stats. Detect alert. Amongst the Suricata signatures that detected the server ransomware, which signature ID alerted the fewest number of lines? But we don't have the signature ID as. Um, a field here so how come how can we how can we search with it signature or alert but signature no results Okay, let me try to type alert but signature equal. So among the Suricata signatures that detected the server malware. So it's saying that the Suricata IDS uh, logs have detected the malware, right? So there must be a mention or a reference for the word server in the logs. So we'll use a white card server. See if we get any fruits. Okay, search. And there is. There are five events. Let's look at the events alert, destination, source IP, source port. Okay, now we, find, we want to find the signature ID actually. So Suricata signature ID here. Okay, that is good. 
So the question is finding the signature ID that alerted the fewest number of times. So all of these signatures have alerted for the presence of the ransomware. We want to find out the one or the ID of the one that has alerted the fewest number of times. So we will use the stats command count by alert signature which is here and also alert signature ID okay so we count these the occurrences of these of the signature ID and the signature and we sort The fewest number was this one. Okay, the server ransomware encrypts files located in Bob Smith Windows profile. How many text files does it encrypt? So you have to find out statistical information about the damage the uh, ransomware inflicted on the machine. So again, if you back to the question, you see we're looking at Windows logs. So back to SysMonitor events or SysMonitor as the source type. Source type. Okay, host. Okay, now back. The server ransomware encrypts files located in Bob Smith. So you're looking at even codes or even IDs that are related to files. So let's see the event codes here. Three, seven, two, one, five, six. So knowing the description of every event code, okay, two means file time create or file create or file modif modify. Let's click on that. Event code two and let's look at the fields. So there is something that has to do with the type of file that has been touched or has been modified, created, whatsoever. Target file name. So here we can see we have photos, XML files, whatever. So we'll use the target file name in the filter. So target file name, but we have to uh, use more filtering in order to narrow the results for file names or files that have been encrypted in uh, Bob Smith Windows profile, which happens to be in the C directory. So equal to C, and don't forget the double backslash. Okay, Bob Smith profile. Let's see if there is some reference about how this can be written. Back to target file name. So users, Bob Smith, wine corp. This is an example. We can take it actually and then modify it. Let's click on this. Okay, we can copy that. Double quotes. I'm gonna remove, um, yeah, so negative or anything. Let's put one more backslash, one more backslash here. So users, Bob Smith, Wine Corp, and then we don't care about anything that comes after. We just care about its extension. Okay, so add another backslash and type dot dot txt. Okay, see how many events we have got with this search criteria.
still searching. So I've got some connection problem, I guess. Let's check out the machine. Is the machine still alive? Nope. It has died. Start the machine. Okay. Unable to connect. One more time. Okay, this is not good. Yeah, so I don't know why this happens. Let me check my network connection. So, my network connection is alive, but the machine is dead. Let's give it a couple of seconds to make sure it has started properly. Close this one. Okay, finally. So fortunately, the comments, we don't need to type the comments from scratch. I have them locked on my machine, so I'm gonna just uh, paste the last command or the latest command we have just worked on. Click on reviewing, all data available. And we don't need to go through all this. Let's go to directly to search. Yeah, search. So this is the latest command run and select 24 August. Uh, do not remember the date actually, so I'm gonna go to ransomware here. See how many events we have got with this. We have four zero six events. Since we're required to find out how many text files that have been encrypted by the ransomware, we have now to pipe this to a stats command. And use this thing count, not count, because we don't want we want to ignore the repeated entries, DC, and this will apply on the target file name field. 
search. So 406. 406 files have been encrypted. How many distinct PDFs did the ransomware encrypt? Yeah, on the remote server. So remember, the ransomware has communicated with the remote server and performed some stuff there. So here we are tasked to find out how many of the PDF files has the ransomware encrypted on the remote file server. So we're back again with DNS as the source. DNS. And we will define the source as the infected machine. Also define the record type to be A. Where is record? Record type A. Uh, no, this is not good. No, no, no. I've actually, I mixed this with the, uh, yeah. So here, are we looking for a domain name, right? No, no, that's domain name, actually. It's PDF files. I mixed this with the last question. So how many distinct PDFs did the ransomware encrypt on the remote file server? So here we need to define, not DNS, and the so, so as a source type, it could be Windows event logs. Win, and here we define wildcards. I only type PDF, see what we can get with this. Okay, so we got some events. We have now to refine the results. So we use the destination field here to mention that or to reference um, the remote file server. So in this case, the remote file server is this one, B9041, yeah. So this one could be a destination or should be a destination and the source is, uh, no, here, the source IP or the source address, if we got anything with that, source address is the infected machine. Here we look at the events where the destination or the source is the infected machine. The destination is the remote file server and with where a PDF file is referenced. The source is Windows event logs. So we got like four, 525 entries. Now the question is how many distinct PDFs? So all you have to do now is to use the stats. Stats DC. DC on what? DC on relative file name because it's the field referencing the file names. And it's zero. So good. No PDF files. How many distinct PDFs? Ah, 257. Why we got zero here? I answered with. 257 and here I got zero let me remove C here or distinct again zero but we saw more let me um, okay search so you got many events referencing file names in pdf as you can see but for some reason i get zero because it's only one file no nope. it is more than one file let's use this one stats dc relative file name relative target name uh, I think I used the wrong name so I should take it from here 
relative target name with underscores. Search and two five eight. Here we got two five seven. So I think it is the source address that we removed. Two five seven. Yeah. Last one. What fully qualified domain name does the server ransomware attempt to direct the user to at the end of its encryption phase? Of course, to pay the ransom. Now here we're back to our old friend stream DNS because we're looking at domain names, so we have to look through DNS. Of course, we type um, the source address. So source as the affected machine. Also, we want to put record type as A. Okay, now, now this query will give us all of the domain names, all of the DNS queries originated from our affected machine. And if you remember, we uh, implemented this command or executed this command before when we were trying to answer uh, which question? Yeah, this question. To find out the first suspicious domain implemented by our affected machine. And we found many whitelists or many uh, false positive domain names. So we eliminated them using not and conditional statements we can use the same list here we used previously don't panic the same list just to whitelist the ip addresses or what is the yeah i'm trying to speak and demonstrate and i removed some stuff query equal yeah try to do, remove just the false positives and we pipe this to table time and then the query itself. Source destination. So as you can see, we got this one that was first visited, and the last one was this one. Technically, this is uh, this makes sense actually because the first time the machine is encrypted. Uh, there is an, an inquiry to the uh, command and control center of the attacker to download further attacks or uh, further malwares. But the last uh, domain that could be visited by the victim is the domain actually uh, to which the victim needs to pay the ransom. So this one is the answer. So that was the last. Uh, question for this challenge. Actually, I like this room. The two practical scenarios uh, would give you the chance to get your hands dirty with Splunk and uh, increase your level of um, knowledge or practical knowledge in Splunk. So we will do more Splunk, of course. This is not the last room, so stay tuned and thank you for watching.